I play a character named Henry Davis, who is a hell of a horse trainer and not such a violent guy. He's more of a vibrant guy. The program is um, it, basically they, they take wild mustangs, break them, and turn them into some horse of value that can be auctioned off that, you know, consequently keeps the, the, the program paid for and leads to their, their rehabilitation as, as, as inmates. My whole life I've been completely terrified of horses. I won't even walk on the same side of the street as a horse. Like, I totally respect it. I think it's a beautiful animal, but the fear was real. You know, even as a grown man, I'm like very afraid of horses. There's nothing I can do, you know? So when I got the script, I was like, okay, here we go. You know, I start reading it. And then as I figure out, like, Henry's basically the best trainer. I'm like, yo, this could be a time as a man I could conquer a fear. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I could, I could really change myself. And um, you don't really get to do that that much in life in general. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I think I'm, 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 I'm going to do this just to challenge myself. This is going to be the best acting that I've ever done, period. Just for the simple fact that I'm controlling this horse that I was once afraid of, you know? The relationship with Roman, it, it starts off a little strange, you know, because Roman's a, a kind of standoff guy and I'm such an explosive energy, you know, I've, I've sort of found happiness already because I'm dealing with this horse program already and Roman is like, just very awkward. He's a very awkward person. But I think I see a lot of me in him and I see a lot of potential in this horse program really helping him just be good to himself because if you can be good to yourself you can be good to other people and uh you know I might tease him a little bit I might give him sort of a hard time but I, I want him to do good you know and, and he's actually trying which is something that I respect <laughs> it's kind of special to watch these guys go from sort of bullheaded to being able to, you know, communicate and, and look at those around them and watch the, their actions affect others, you know, because a lot of time people in prison are in prison because they don't realize how their actions affect others, you know, and in, in, in the process of all that, you know, the, the redemption level gets higher and higher the, seri the more serious you're taken. They're a direct reflection of what you do. If you get big, they get big, you know, if 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 you're calm they're calm like it's it's a direct mirror image and at the same time it's such a beautiful majestic eerie animal you know what i mean it has its own mind even though you can train it like you can put somebody in a cage and train them but they have their own mind it's still a respect factor in the fact that this horse is letting you <laughs> ride off into the wind with it you know what i mean like everybody sees zorro dive out of a tree onto a horse and just thinks that it's it's that easy but it's, it's not it's a respect thing it's the horse saying i'll wait for you and it, yeah it's a big deal <laughs> it's a big deal laura is she's so dope She's so dope because one day I see myself there, you know, as, as a director who understands acting on, on a different level because she's a beautiful actress, you know, but she's also very humble in the sense of like the language barrier that we have and the, the small different nuances in relationships. She respects it, you know, and she's very humble to it, but she's also very outgoing and she doesn't take you know what I mean? Like, she's like, no, I think I want the horse to do this. I want you guys to do this. I want it to feel like this. I think it needs to feel like this. And she knows that if she gets it in the moment, you know, like each, each scene has, has, has an arc in different beats and things. And then each act has different arcs and each movie has an ultimate arc. But if you get it right there in, in each scene, then you come out with a great movie. You're on set with guys who started from here and can come here now and be happy about the reason that they're here 
and can give you some crazy details and you know all these things and still have enough respect for you to shake your hand at the end of the day it just it, it makes you feel like you're headed in the right direction as a human you know what i mean because like <laughs> i could i could be a diva just like they could choose to be hardcore thug you know what i mean but like <laughs> they they're making the decision to to open up and, and change and be something different you know what i mean so it's like a beautiful thing to be able to experience with them Matthias is really, really dope. And it's crazy because um, my little brother was born in Belgium. <laughs> so, like, before I met him, I was, like, thinking that he was going to be super, like, weird in French. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm not, I don't really, you know, well, he's Dutch, actually. But I was like, I don't really know how to have a relationship with this guy. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to tell him about my brother, you know, in Belgium. And, and when I met him, it was so much different than that. You know what I mean? He was just like, he was explosive like I'm explosive. and loves to laugh like I love to laugh and likes to hug like I like to hug. You know, he's just that guy. He's that, he, he matches my energy. You know what I mean? He's like this white Belgian version of me, you know? The central character is Roman Coleman and he's uh, uh, incarcerated for um, violence. Uh, he's actually um, a very closed off antisocial character until he meets this horse who has the same symptoms of fear and anxiety than him. So he recognizes himself through this journey of trying to tame this wild horse and that helps him to reconnect with himself and with his own emotions and with the man that he never met. This is uh, about um, 20, 25 inmates uh, who are in reality at the end of their sentences. Uh, they shouldn't have any violent case within the last two years. And, um, and, 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 and it's a rehabilitation program that involved the, the, the taming of wild horses in three months to auction them uh, for public adoption. Uh, so um, then they have to do it again with a new horse, a fresh horse. Uh, the goal is to reconnect, is to learn patience, to tame your own violence and anger. Um, it's very therapeutic for those men to kind of realize who they are. It's the horse trainer of this program will tell you, like the horse teach the men to know who they are. It was very, very valuable for the story to be in this authentic element. And I always wanted to be in an active prison for this film, for Mustang. Um, and I really wanted to shoot in this prison with this program. So I started conversation with like the correctional department and if, at the end it was very complicated to be in an active prison. But they, they have here like this empty prison that they closed 10 years ago and, and, and that was much easier. And also because it's so authentic, because you feel like people were there yesterday, it was very helpful for us and for the actors uh, to set up the right tone because there's something that you can't build or that you can't create. The atmosphere that uh, it diffuses is absolutely inimitable. That was crucial. There was also part of my, my goal and my, and my um, um, creativity is to blend this authentic element with, with, with film, with uh, a crew and with actors. And to have those former inmates um, who helped me so much to deepen the story and the characters, who gave me like all their, their, their stories, details and, and, and helped me also as consultants. Um, I thought that have their example and because they went through this journey because they found themselves at peace and, and, uh, and oh, today are completely redeemed. I thought it was a, a very strong um, layers to, to work with those people and to have their guidance. Matthias knows horses but 
he's also a bit scared, which is wonderful for the character because this is really what Roman experience is fear, overcoming your own fear and overcoming your own anger and being able to, 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 to change your body language, to be able to connect with an animal who don't speak. And so there's no, there's an invisible dialogue that, that starts and you can see how they respond to each other with just that, the, 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 um, uh, an emotional and body language. And, uh, and Matthias, as soon as he was in the arena with a wild horse, his face, his eyes, his response was, was changed so much. And he had this vulnerability and this humility that was exactly what I was expecting from my character. So uh, it made me very, very happy and excited. It's definitely a very kind, humane message about um, hope about the second chance, about human transformation. It's also like a potential response to violence, uh, how natural and simple a connection can be, and how a, an animal can repair the soul of a man, of a broken man. Um, I've definitely met so many, so many people who are dealing with strong, strong violence, anger, ego, and how an animal responds to that is actually like a mirror that face your own uh, insecurity, shadows, fear. Um, and, and I mean, in a very idealistic way, if, if, if men, if like humanity was more connected to this, to nature, to their own nature, to nature in general, I would say that uh, a lot of those people would be healed. It's uh, indescribable. I mean, it's, I can't even believe it. I'm like really, really making my dream. And, um, and I have to say that this journey needed that time. I, I'm, I'm happy that I didn't rush it. I'm glad that I could also develop it through Sundance Institute. That was very, very helpful. That allowed me to spend so much time here to research in a field that I didn't really know. And, uh, and it was a very journalistic documentary approach first. And that was such a fascinating adventure that I don't even regret an hour of the time that I spent doing it. The day he arrived, um, everyone fell in love with him. He, is, he has this capacity of um, being so generous and lovable and funny and uh, and always have this good humor and, and those kind words, especially toward women. I have to say that he loves being around <laughs> women. Um, beside that is a wonderful actor. He's exactly the mice that I was expecting. He has this humanity and kindness and fragility. He also have like this very stubborn and tough way to be and to talk and to and, and this natural authority who actually um, defines miles and this father figure and there's something very beautiful about this man who spent his life to teach his own passion and to have this legacy of teaching those men it's like this mirror games between two creatures who um, help each other to find their own uh, redemption and freedom. Redemption, empathy, love. Uh, it's definitely a, re a story about a man who finds his own way to redemption, to, to resurrect, I would say. Yeah, it's really about uh, a man's resurrection. The poetry of the images and the silence and this invisible dialogue between man and animal need to be on a big screen. And, uh, and, and, and I'm also a big advocate of big screen and cinema. I love going in cinema. I love being in a dark room with strangers and feel and cry and laugh and having those similar emotions. And that's a very unique experience that cannot be replaced by any other um, support.
the program has proven itself to be the most successful or one of the most successful uh, rehabilitation programs in terms of, I mean, the percentage of recidivism is, is almost none. Um, because there's a lot of programs, there's art programs, there's, there's, um, well, there's so many different type of programs, depending on the facility and the state you're in. Um, but this very program has, uh, has proven itself to be very efficient. It's a person who comes back to life. You know, he was, uh, he was, yeah, he was alive, but he was kind of dead. And, and, yeah, long story short, the horse bring him, brings him back to life, brings him back to himself, bring, brings him back to the others, uh, brings back awareness, brings back reflection, um, you know, all these type of things. Um, so yeah, he, he's, a, he's a changed person at the end, for sure. I'm glad we're able to shoot in a, in a real facility because, you know, these walls have absorbed, you know, a massive amount of energy and, and, and life and, and whatnot. So if we would have to shoot this in, in a, you know, in a set or, of course, we would, we would do it, but it's, it's, it's a big difference. Uh, because you, you can, even if you come here at night, I came to walk here at night all by myself, just, you know, just to experience or feel or, man, this place is alive. The horse is, is kind of a mirror um, because it feeds off of your energy. So if you, if you give it aggression, if you give it violence, that's what you're going to get back. And the more you, you know, the, the more you're gentle, the more you relax next to the horse, the more you're going to receive the same. Um, but yeah, there's, there's just so many studies about that, about what, the, what goes on in that, in that you know, a rehabilitation program. Um, but I think the base of it all is, is that it, it's, uh, it's sincere. The wild animal is the wild animal and it will never pretend to be anything else. So it doesn't has, it doesn't have masks or, 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 you know, tricks to manipulate or whatnot. It's, it's not, so it's always pure. And I think it's that purity that eventually, um, eventually heals humans. Because she's been working on this screenplay already for, I don't know, four or five years. So she really, you know, she really embodies that screenplay. So she knows every, every transition, every beat, every, she's, she masters all of it. But at the same time, she's very open and receptive to the elements that you might not, not have imagined as you were writing it, because all of a sudden you're on a set, you're in a space, you're, you know, uh, you're dealing with all types of actors. And, uh, and she's very receptive and, and open to that and creative. So I think, I, I think she's more of a, she, she directs like a painter. We're actually having real people with us that went through it and they exude that. Uh, and they're very generous and gentle, but they, in, in everything they do, in everything they say, they exude their past. And that, and that helps us as actors to, to, to really, you know, stay grounded and, and, uh, and very connected to the matter. This movie is about them, you know what I mean? It's not, and we make it for them. And, uh, and we make it not only for them, it's about them, it's for them, but it's also for the people to understand, um, yeah, the, the, the importance of, of humanizing the dehumanized, no matter what people have done. Um, it's not because people have done certain crimes that they should be, you know, treated as animals. People can be punished, but therefore you don't need to treat them like animals. I hope this film will be a kick in the heart, not a kick in the gut. It will be a kick in the gut for sure, but I'd rather, I'd rather have it being a, being a kick in the heart. So let's, let's, let's aim for that. Let's, let's get into people's hearts and let's, uh, yeah, let's 
you know, make him more sensitive and more sensible to, to the destiny of other people. Be patient, be gentle, um, don't impose yourself. Um, try to understand the horse. If the, if the horse shows you that it doesn't like your proximity, then back off. Um, so actually, it's, it's treated with respect. Um, don't, don't get in there for selfish purposes. Uh, acknowledge the horse. Respect the horse, respect its space. Um, and then you'll be fine. And if you do the opposite, basically the same goes for humans. The way it came to me was through our Sundance Labs, you know, that we have. Uh, and Laura came through the lab process, and I was kind of assigned to her to be her, her um, guide. And in the course of that time, I got to know her very, very well, and I, realized I could really understand what her real skill was, her talent, a lot of compassion, uh, smart, very smart, and also tough-minded which I thought was a pretty good um, quality to have. This was about an animal that I love dearly, the, the horse, and the, the fact that the, the horse is really symbolic of the American West. And so those two things were going to come together. The idea that her passion, when she gets involved with something, she attaches a passion to it which makes it even stronger. At any rate, the, the ultimate on all that was that she and I became very close, and I decided I want to continue to work with her to make sure that the story she wants to tell gets made. In order to really work effectively with a horse, that, particularly one that's new and that you're in the process of maybe breaking, you have to have a lot of patience. You can't rush things. You have to get to a point where you build up enough confidence for the horse to come to you. If you start to push and get aggressive, try to push the horse to do something you want them to do, you're, you're creating an obstacle because they'll back up. On the other hand, if you just are with a horse and don't ask anything of the horse, just stay there with the horse, at some point you can walk around and the horse will stay, and you'll walk around and you'll stop, and you'll walk around again and you'll stop, as long as you stop and you stay stopped long enough, the horse is going to become more relaxed and realize that you're not a danger to them. Once that happens and the horse starts to come to you, then you realize you've accomplished the first step. So now when you go around, the horse will go with you. And eventually that will lead to you getting on the horse and riding the horse. The connection there was pretty powerful in that the horse was damaged by treatment, and therefore violently reluctant to do anything, as was he. He'd been treated badly. Uh, he was an angry person. The horse was angry because of the, ho the way the horse had been treated. And at some point, they were completely at odds with each other because of that quality. So what had to happen, they had to come together, and he had to learn how to relax. He had to learn how to give up certain things, particularly anger. Once he could get rid of some of his anger, then that would make him available to the horse. But as long as he carried anger, the horse was going to be put off because the horse would feel that anger. So he had to release his anger and get rid of it to begin with. Then he had to wait for the horse to get rid of its anger. He's an old, old dear friend. He, uh, he and I first came together in The Great Gatsby in that film. And we realized we had a lot in common, and um, then he and I, just cut a long story short, he and I became very, very close friends. So for me to, and I've tried to use him periodically over time, like in our souls at night, I cast him. And so here, this was a perfect role for him to play because he could just bark. You know, he loves to bark. He loves to get angry. He loves to really explode. And so this gave him the great chance. Great actor. What's great about Connie is she's not only attractive, uh, she, there's a depth to her. There's a, 
there's an honest intelligence that she has. I've known her for quite a while and um, very, very fond of her. And I think when she presents herself, you see somebody who's really, really intelligent and kind. And when she puts those two things together, you get a really special performance. So it was just fun to have her in the movie, you know. I met him on Our Souls at Night, the film I did with Jane Fonda, where he played, and his role in, at that time was of a discontent. And he was an angry person because of the way he had been treated by his mother. I was so impressed, and he had to come around. And to watch his transition take place uh, showed me what a really good actor he was. And uh, so I thought, God, I'd, I'd like to work with that guy again. And so here was the chance. And that gave him, I think this film gives him the chance to really explore all parts of himself, which I think is really, because there are a lot of parts to him. So for me, it was a joy to be able to use him in the film.